Hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of All About Bridge Engineering. And this episode is also put in the playlist from books to reality because in this episode we will bridge the gaps between metallic guide bearings that is mentioned in our codes and its practical application in the construction projects around us. So if you are a bridge design engineer, then you must have used metallic guide bearings under some of your superstructures in one of your projects, but the chances of seeing a metallic guide bearing in reality, especially for people who work in consultancies, uh, which are only restricted to the design work is very rare. So in this episode, I will show you towards the second part of the episode, a metallic guide bearing, which is present on a bearing pedestal and over which the superstructure will be coming very soon. But before that, let us discuss the metallic guide bearing and its components. Where can we find this sketch which, are you, which you are seeing on the screen? So this sketch is taken from IRC code IRC 83 part 3. And you will now see its detailed name on the screen. So IRC 83 part 3 stands for Standard Specifications and code of practice for road bridges. Section number nine, bearings and part three includes spot bearing, pin bearing, metallic guide, and plane sliding bearings. And in this very code, if you will go to page number, let's say 13, you will have this sketch, which is totally dedicated to metallic guide bearings. So now let's have a discussion about the components of metallic guide bearings, and then I will show you a very clear real image of a practical metallic guide bearing in bridges around us. So generally a metallic guide bearing consists of two components. First is this inverted U and the second is this T. So generally if you will split it into two parts, you will have a pie shaped component or it is also called a U part. And then you have a T shaped component, which you can see on the bottom side. And it may be the case that the bearing that you will see is upside down or in this in that case t will be on the upper side and u may be on the bottom side but the total purpose of the metallic guide bearing is to allow translation in one direction and restrict translation in the other direction what i mean by this is this bearing has the capability to move or slide in one particular horizontal direction but the horizontal direction that is perpendicular to the sliding direction there it will restrict the horizontal forces. Now those horizontal forces, if it is in the transfer direction, may be due to seismic transfer section or maybe due to wind in the transfer direction. But if it is in the longitudinal direction, then those horizontal forces, which the metallic guide bearing has to restrict, may be due to the braking forces or due to the temperature forces associated with the bridge. Now I will show you a real life image of a metallic guide bearing. So here's presenting a practical image or a real image of a metallic guide bearing. And you can very clearly see that this is the inverted T. As we discussed that it has two components, a T shape. And at the bottom, you can see a U shape component as well. So this is at the bottom, this component is the U shape component. Now this very bearing also has some anchoring arrangements. For example, these shear studs. So these shear studs, shear studs will be totally embedded in the superstructure that will come over its top. So we will discuss more about the anchoring arrangements. There are two types of anchoring arrangements, but le but let us first clearly visualize this very beautiful real image of a metallic guide bearing. And also in the next part of the episode or in the second half of the episode, you will see a quick short walk around of the same. Now I will again share one more very important table regarding the metallic guide bearings and other type of bearings and bridges around us. So this table is again extracted from IRC 83 part three. So in this bearing, in this table, you will see that we have different types of bearings. For example, fixed pot, free sliding bearing, then you have a guided sliding pot, 
then you have a free sliding assembly and at the last most row you can see a metallic guide as well but please note that this guided sliding pot and metallic guide are different please do not get confused between these two things guided sliding pot is different than a metallic guide because you can very clearly read that a guiding sliding pot restricts the vertical direction loads as well but a metallic guide has no capability to restrict vertical loads which means that in a metallic guide vertical loads are not restricted and as you can see unidirectional for direction of restraining horizontal force which means only in one direction it can restrain horizontal force and only in one direction it can allow the translation similarly only in one direction it can allow the rotation so this table is very very important and if you are a bridge design engineer you must have come across such a table frequently while preparing the bearing layouts during the submission of drawings for the superstructure which is rested on bearings so now we will have a focus on anchoring arrangements of a metallic guide bearing and again this bottom thing that you are seeing is again taken from IRC 83 part 3 so generally there are two types of anchoring arrangements part a which is the anchoring arrangement with bolt nut or screw sleeve system you can see that this is the top of the bearing and this is the bottom of the bearing so these are basically assembled to the superstructure through anchor bolts with nut and washers but on the right side if this is the top of the bearing and this is the bottom of the bearing you can very clearly see that these are anchored through shear studs and you can very clearly also read a shear stud label is present just for the shear studs this top portion will be embedded in the top superstructure superstructure it will be embedded during the casting of the superstructure and the bottom will be casted in the bearing pedestal so the metallic guide bearing that we will be seeing just in few seconds now has second option or this option and not the first option but it's very rare that it's very frequent that first option can also be there in some of the projects so now let's have a quick walk around of metallic guide bearings in bridges around us.